can I ask what your questions were? Like, what were you looking at when you're in terms of evolution and mm-hmm. evolution of religion? And then mm-hmm. maybe I can ask mm-hmm. more from there. <clears throat> yes, certainly. So maybe I should just profess uh, this uh, explanation by saying, um, because I was trained as a scholar of religion, I am sensitive to the fact that saying that religion evolved may be... Um, it's, it's maybe an issue for a couple of people or for a lot of people, actually. Uh, and just to say that this is not uh, a statement about ontology, like what is and what is not, and if religion exists or if God exists, that's not my purpose here. This is really m- me having a scientific quote on myself and really using the scientific methodology to ask questions that you know the methodology allows me to ask. Uh, and that so this is not really to say that, you know, basically it says, if we assume that humans evolved, and I think there is there are good reasons to assume that, it may also make sense to assume that culture evolved. And within culture, we can ask specific questions about religion and why religion might have evolved. Now, <clears throat> however, this is, this is a really a huge problem question how like why religion evolved and so i would like to narrow it down a bit because my specific interest is ritual behavior um, which we often think of uh, as part of religion but it doesn't need to be right you can think about rituals uh, um, in the army or in boy scouts or what, what have you even in the secular uh, kind of communities we often have also rituals so my question which is a bit more narrow but still pretty vague is why we have rituals and how rituals have evolved. And this is what I'm really interested in at the moment. And uh, recently with my uh, colleague, Radek Kunt, we proposed uh, an evolutionary model of ritual behavior. What we, what we basically try to do is to ask, okay, so if we assume that ritual behavior evolved because it has some function, it has some adaptive function for humans when it started to evolve and can we connect it with behaviors of our close relatives, uh, like the chimpanzees or baboons or you know, other non-human primates, to see if we can trace the evolution of this specific behavior really deep uh, into the uh, human evolutionary history. And so what we did is that first we defined the main function of ritual behavior. And there I will... I really think about collective rituals. So this is the things that we do together that are ritualized. And uh, our proposition is that uh, rituals evolved because they help us to communicate our intentions. And you can think about this as nonverbal communication. Of course, nowadays we have rituals that are very elaborate, very symbolic. There is deep meaning. There is a lot of language, chanting, and so on. But when you think about evolution, we can go actually much deeper. And I think like with rituals, we can go beyond language and don't even need symbols per se uh, to be present, to have ritual communication or what we call more specifically ritualized communication. And that's where we really get closer to our relatives, uh, the other non-human primates that also have a lot of ritualized communication. And so for us, the, the starting point was really to see how we can, uh, or like what could have been communicated through rituals. And uh, the proposition that we made based on like a lot of current studies that we see how rituals function is that rituals help us to communicate cooperative intentions. So basically those are intentions that we want to do something with other people. And, you know, like in evolutionary sciences, the as it, as, it, as it is called, the problem of cooperation is a huge topic. So how could have cooperation evolved? Because we as humans are really, a, I wouldn't say ultra cooperative species, because this is usually, this label is uh, used for bees and ants and like these really genetically very closely related species. But for us as humans, we, are really, we really stand out because we are able to cooperate with uh, a lot of other people who are not necessarily genetically related to us. Uh, so we think that ritual is one of the answers. This is uh, how we got to where we are right now, that we are able to cooperate so much. And we can do so because we have means to communicate our cooperative intentions. And other uh, non-human primates uh, do have them as well. Uh, like in baboons, there are these 
for example, there are these uh, greetings between males where they, they, for example, hold each other's genitalia or they poke fingers under their eyelids. And these are all behaviors that are potentially costly for them, meaning that they are a bit dangerous because they make themselves vulnerable to the others. But by this, they communicate their uh, intention of, the, I don't want to harm you. I actually want to be friends with you and I want to do something together. Uh, so we have a starting point of like similarity with these other uh, non-human primates. But then obviously when we look at current rituals, they are quite different than what we see in non-human primates. And so the question is like how we got from there to where we are right now. And uh, in, in the paper that I talked about with my colleague Radek, uh, we uh, identified several evolutionary pressures on human cooperation that would be like a climate variability, uh, that would be uh, like hunting large game and uh, all these uh, like external factors that we do not necessarily observe in non-human primates. So, you know, we have a good assumption to assume they don't have these external pressures, so they were not really forced to uh, evolve these other um, ways to communicate their cooperative intentions. While we as humankind, we had these forces and, you know, for, for the individuals and the groups that adapted these new types of communication, which we call ritualized communication, we say that it was adaptive for them. Uh, however, we faced really a huge problem in trying to find um, material evidence for these claims. So we are really looking at the span of, let's say, two million years of human evolution. And, you know, thinking about detecting in the archaeological record uh, remains of ritual behavior, which may be just gestures. It's impossible. Like, we can't really do it. Uh, we do have uh, depictions of ritual behavior, for example, in cave paintings, but this would come usually much later than the ability to actually do the ritual. Uh, like, uh, you know, I would say a like couple hundreds of thousands of years later. Uh, so what we did instead is that we uh, looked at what cognitive mechanisms are necessary for uh, the ritualized communication, and then looked at what other external pressures on these cognitive mechanisms existed. You know, so this this would be like uh, over imitation. This would be like theory of mind uh, and these basic psychological mechanisms. And we try to trace their evolution because we have a bit more uh, evidence for it. And then we would say, okay, we have these external pressures occur occurring at some points in human evolution. We have these mechanisms evolving at some point. So we said. You know, these, the most basic signals that we call similarities. So this is basically just imitating each other. This could have evolved, for example, 1.8 million years ago. And then we would get a bit more complex and complex with signals that we call coalitional, which means basically I'm signaling that I want to do something with you in the group, go for a hunt, go for a raid of the other group, eventually leading to, um, uh, what we call commitment signals. So these are signals that are a bit more complex because you need to have also uh, a prospective thinking into future, which says uh, we have this cooperative dilemma. For example, we want to go to hunt um, really some dangerous animal uh, and we need all of us to really commit to that action because if someone uh, you know shirks and don't go eventually, that's going to endanger the rest of the group. So we really need to find a way to communicate our intentions reliably. Uh, so this is not just to say, you know, I will do it because that's just very cheap to say it and then not do it. But then from there we get um, uh, rituals that often involve uh, pain and harming body or sacrificing resources and all these uh, kind of gestures that are expensive and that often suggest that you are really committed to the action. And we trace the evolution of these commitment signals basically more or less to the uh, emergence of uh, homo sapiens. Um, mostly one of the external pressures there would be uh, uh, a really huge, um, basically enlarging of uh, the cooperative groups. So to more anonymous people and uh, encountering more and more other groups that you don't really have uh, relations with, and there would be also some warfare potentially. And this is where you think really the ritual uh, signals uh, came together uh, and became the basis of what we see now as ritual. And that this might have been all before symbols, before symbolic language, before religion. And uh, so the claim here would be that 
religion is based on the rituals and then you know you get some supernatural beliefs and so on later on and, and rituals help you to uh establish those beliefs and actually um keep them uh in the group and propagate them further and further but that's yeah that, that's basically the end of our story here we just say this is when we think rituals already appeared and then from there religions may have started to build on that uh, so sorry i know this was a bit long but uh, hopefully it made sense <laughs>